Blog Talk Radio. Fire, the gospel experience, giving you the very best. Welcome to Fire, the gospel experience that is dedicated to honoring the truth and only living creator God. Now is the time, beloved, to let your mind, body, and soul be refreshed in our relationship with our creator God and his precious, beautiful son, our savior, Jesus the Christ, Jesus Christ, is unashamedly declared to be the only true Savior and the Son of God. Praise the Lord. Welcome to fire. I'm your purpose and power-driven host, Ryan E. Jefferson, here to bring you the most uplifting and soul-inspiring music ever made. Fire is the broadcast, beloved, that will light, ignite, and fan the flames in your spirit to be that victorious believer in Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord. I'm not just talking about something that I heard from somebody else or something that was kind of passed down to me from some elders in my family or something that I just happened to read in a book or overheard in a conversation that people was talking about. I'm talking about being victorious in God from my own experience. Listen, I'm happy to have y'all here with me for another wonderful fire gospel experience because that's what this is. This ain't just no radio show, beloved. I'm here to do certain things. First of all, to recognize God as the only true God. There is no other God. And that he is all-powerful, all-knowing, all-loving. And he has everything under his wonderful control. Regardless of the circumstances, regardless of the chaos that is going on in our world, if you take time and read and study your Bible prayerfully, you'll understand that everything that's going on now, was already prophesied in that wonderful, wonderful book called the Bible. So, sit back and relax. Trust God. If you don't know him, I would strongly suggest and urge that you pray and ask God to come into your life. And you can only do that by accepting his son of Jesus the Christ. That very man that walked the streets of Palestine, Judea, over in Jerusalem, in the ancient times, in the Bible days. 
He's still alive. Why? Because he's God. And he was able to get up out of the grave through his own resurrection power. Wow. Who else have you heard in religious circles make that type of claim and backing it up? Because the testimony of so many people is, God changed my life. I used to do this. I used to be there. And now by me putting my faith in God, trusting in his word, and believing that Jesus Christ actually is the son of God, my life has changed. And it has never, ever, never been the same. So listen, we are going to be embracing today. For our biblical insight and thought John 14, 1 through 6 Where we read our Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ I'm praying he's your Lord and Savior Was sharing words of consolation to his disciples The time of his crucifixion, beloved, and departure is at hand He shares with them about their place in heaven And the way to get there Now, he's assuring them that he is the way to heaven, salvation, and the Father. My special guest is already here. I'm talking about awesome man of God. I'm so excited and happy. I had this day scheduled man for a long time to have this awesome man of God that is going to blow you away with his testimony. And if that don't do it, guess what? I promise you, he's going to blow you away with his music. I have my good friend, brother in Christ talking about the sanctified soldier is here with us today and he's going to be a blessing to us I promise you my good brother man I've got Thomas Morrison is going to put it down like you've never heard it before and then listen I have another gospel rapper here that's going to bring word up so we're taking this gospel straight to the front line we're taking it to the streets man for me ain't shame I'm talking about gospel rapper Stephen Marshall is here to bless us with word up so listen, you still have time. You can go ahead and call your friends and you can call your family members and let them know that Ron E. Jefferson is back on the airwaves. And I have already prayed and Holy Spirit God is here. And he has just lit the fuse to turn the internet and the airwaves on sanctified Holy Ghost fire. As we enter in this place, with our minds stayed on you, Father, let us bring you glory. In everything we do, let us be pleased. Yeah. 
You are listening to Fire, the gospel explosion where the praises are going up and the worries are going away. Playing for you the best and the newest gospel music on the planet and the most inspiring encouragement under God's heaven. Keep tuning in and bless your family, your friends, and your co-workers by telling them about Fire. Apostle Thomas, bringing it to him, my victory over sin. Uh. Every day we struggle, put your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, he'll make it happen. When I look, give my review, see that old man, thanking God every day for his master plan.
Hallelujah, hallelujah. Don't you know greater that's in you if you know the Lord and have accepted Jesus Christ as your personal Savior? Don't you know that greater is he that's in you than them rascals and them devils that's out there in the world? Praise the Lord. We are doing what we do right here on fire. The gospel experience, man, we just setting this bad boy on fire. Listen, we started that fire gospel experience off with new music from gospel artist Felicia Sheard Park. She just sent me that song, Resonate. I told her, I seen on Facebook, I told her, say, child, don't even worry about it. We're going to play your music and we're going to enjoy it and we're going to have a good time while you praising the Lord. And then, listen, we set that bad boy off with my special guest from the song that you just heard. Don't you know that you got victory over sin? Oh, Lord, have mercy. I promise you, you do. Listen, my special guest, your man ain't no joke. He out here doing his thing. He has a testimony that I promise you it's going to knock your sanctified socks off when you hear what this man of God has been through, Lord Jesus. I love the quote that I've heard so many times that God doesn't call the qualified. He qualifies the call. And then he told us, he said that, Many people that think they're going to be going into enter into the pearly gates of heaven first, if they make it at all, God says the whoremonger and the drunkard and all the hard-hit, rebellious people are going to be going in first. Why? Because once we reach bottom and got beat way, way down, guess what we did? We repented. <laughs> Yes, Lord, we came to God very humbly, very graciously, and we told the Lord. We said, look, from this day on, whatever it is you want me to do with my life, Lord God, I am surrendering to you. While everybody else is fronting and playing these take the side, holy than thou game. Man, listen, there's people out there that are transformed every day because we took a look at who our lives used to be. We weren't satisfied and we humbly ask and pray, say, God, would you come into my life and make those necessary changes so that I can have peace and joy, be saved from judgment, which is damnation. People are going to try to act like hell ain't real, but I promise you the Bible says it's real, and I ain't taking no chance. I ain't even trying to go there. But Jesus is the way, and we are happy to make that announcement. So listen, without any further ado, my special guest is a man of God that he is doing marvelous things. I'm not going to tell his story, but the brother has been through some things. Let me tell you again, he has been through some things. From Seattle, Washington, he now resides in Charleston, South Carolina. This man has many God-ordained projects, and I'm not going to try to tell it all. I'm going to go ahead and let him tell his story in his very, very own special way. So y'all better sit back and relax, because I promise you, when this brother gets through telling it, it's going to be very well told. So without any further ado, my special honor and special guest to introduce to some and to present to others, man of God, gospel rapper, among many, many other things, sanctified soldier, Thomas Morrison is in the house. Praise the Lord. Come on in here, man of God. <laughs> How you doing, Ron? Man, listen, I'm just as happy as I can be to have you on here, man, because look, <laughs> I already know you got power in your testimony, in your ministry, and I'm just happy to have you here with us today, man. Listen, uh, what I want to do, man, is I want you to just go ahead and start from the beginning and tell us who you are and what happened in your life, and then we're just going to go from there. So come on with it, man. Introduce yourself. Tell the people who you are. Well, thank you, Mr. Jefferson. Man of God, God bless you first and foremost, and it is an honor uh, to be on your show this afternoon on this beautiful Blessed Sunday. Uh, my yes, name birth by birth is Thomas uh, Leroy Morrison. Um, some people call me Tommy Lee out there in the car business, but uh, in the churches and in the world of of ministry and the anointings and favor that God has put upon me, uh, the Holy Spirit renamed me as the sanctified soldier, God's chosen one. Um, mm. Many years ago, um, 
my life, as as you well know, uh, was uh, it was uh, it was a bad situation. It was uh, mm-hmm. a situation of of, of uh, bondage, immense mm-hmm. bondage. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, we we all have times in our life that we've been through uh, hell and bad, yes, we per se. Uh, we've had times. Uh, as I grew up as a young man, where there was a single parent taking care of me and, and four four girls, and uh, mm. my mama did what she had to do to uh, lace our tennis shoes and make sure that we were tight and ready to fight fight against the grips of the streets uh, that yes, we grew sir. up in, which is in Seattle, Washington. Um, and then me, my sister Robin, uh, we ventured back into California. Uh, my niece Aisha, uh, we went back and forth, you know, because we was in the dope game. Uh, growing up at a very okay. young age, I began to smoke marijuana uh, at the age of 10, 11 years old. My mama first started putting vodka in the bottle when I was uh, two, three years old, would not lay down and go to sleep. Um, you know, the devil got to work very, 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 very early in my life. Um, mm. I still love my mama. I love my parents, even though there were some things that were done uh, that obviously they were blind to the fact upon due to the, the way they were living. Um, that mm-hmm. still does not mm-hmm. erase or replace compassion and respect I have for my mother and my father. Um, mm-hmm. Growing up, it was fun. For me and my four sisters, we had a lot of fun times. We used to act like we were the Jackson Five when we were little kids. You know, I was. Thinking, I don't know. Did you see that post that I sent down on Facebook? When I was like, I think I was like about six or seven years old, and I had the little natural and the blue suit. I seen it. <laughs> man, then was you the shot, days, man. bro. Yes, yeah, there was the days right there, man. When when life was good, you know, my mom worked. My mom actually went to the to the police academy when we was young. Um, yes, sir. My mother got caught up in it with some of the wrong guys being a single parent mother. Mm. As young people to get caught up with some of the wrong uh, people in our lives growing up, um, getting into involved yeah. with the drugs in the streets early on. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. But you know, it's I still think it's really out there. I mean, you see it in the community today. Uh, there, mm-hmm. you know, I, I had this discussion with a young man and. And we were the discussion was about why is it everybody that you meet they was even raised by their mother mm-hmm. or their father in a single parent home? Not everybody, but for the most part, um, yeah. the, the the generational curse of a single parent mother raising a child by themselves and the father's mm-hmm. gone to prison or dead or in jail or, or messed up yeah. on drugs, vice versa, even with the mother. Um, that's what we experienced, man. Um, but when mm-hmm. I when I was growing up in Seattle, Seattle was a wonderful place for me to live. We lived down on Empire Street and Rose Street, um, down in the south end of Seattle. Um, mm-hmm. By the time I hit about, I don't know, 11, 12 years old, I started smoking weed. I started learning how to sell dope. I, I started getting involved with the gangs and, and the street life. By the time I was uh, 13, 14 years old, um, I had took my first flight with a a 38 automatic. Uh, me and my mother was living in a shelter. Uh, my mother was really, really at this point of the game. She was, you know, bad. She went from the good to the bad in terms of okay. living lifestyle, drugs, job. Um, you know, mm-hmm. drugs got the All best right. of her. And mm-hmm. um, I ended up going and robbing nine people in one hour um, for whatever twos and fews that they had. Uh, me and an older brother, um, my uh, my boy Mike. Big Mike took me out, and he seen me sitting on the street. He said, what's wrong, little G? I said, man, I'm hungry. I ain't got no food to eat. My mom in there, she's, you know, strung mm-hmm. out. We ain't got no money in in, mm-hmm. in the house. The electricity is off. You know, we got to light candles at night. You know what I mean? The yeah, yeah. Um, I yeah. tried to go in the refrigerator and get some hot dogs, but the hot dogs had mold on them. You know, mm-hmm. so Come on. Um, I ended up uh, walking with him that day. And I remember clearly we was in the projects up on Yesler Street in Seattle, Yesler Terrace as they called it. Um, we went and got us a joint from uh, Mr. Green, a five dollar joint, as we could call it. I don't know what was it yeah. that week, but boy, it made you feel like everything once you took a few tokes of it. And with that bunch of devil, you know, when I tell you the devil got at me at an early age, like 
like the devil was sending demons at me early because he knew that what God had for me. And I'm going to tell you something. The devil knows and understands what God's purpose and plan is for all of us. He knows yeah. that the success mm-hmm. and, and, and the different things that have been prophesied already, the devil sees these things. Just like God knows what we do, and he knows where our life is going to go because he's planned it out before we came out the womb. Okay? Mm-hmm. The devil knows who God's chosen soldiers are. The devil knows right. who God's chosen people are that are made mm-hmm. and destined to do what God's already planned for them to do. So he knows already off the bat before we even come of age that he is trying to do all these different things to cut us off. So long yes, story sir. short, I took that pistol. Me and Mike went up on Broadway and we robbed about eight, nine people. Of course, he didn't do nothing. He was an older cat. He made me put in all the work. I'm pulling pistols mm-hmm. on people, telling them to drop it like it's hot. I, I, yeah, the last yeah. person I robbed it was for $23. Mm-hmm. And the first bid that I got off of that armed robbery was 103 to 129 weeks in a juvenile rehabilitation center. Um, yeah. Now, listen, and, listen and to then, this, Brother Thomas. Growing up in Detroit, you know what the, uh, what the muggers used to say? Huh? They used to say, you know what this is. You know what this is. Drop it like it's hot. <laughs> Mm-hmm. It's crazy, right? I was yep. crazy, and I know up in Detroit, they was it, they was ruthless up there, though. Them, I mean, back in the day, in the you know the eighties and the nineties, man, it was it was everywhere in the world, man. I don't care if it's yep. L.A., New York, Detroit, Seattle, Texas, Houston, you know what I'm saying? The sixth ward, yep. fifth ward, all these different places, man. We all suffer from it, the same iniquities, man. Um, but yeah, nevertheless, it's a spiritual um, attack. It's a spiritual attack spiritual from the enemy attack. who's looking for yes. who's looking for geography, a place to reside. Yes, yes. And you know the devil. Um, I remember in the word it says, "What the devil will take over many regions in the world." Mm-hmm. Um, you know mm-hmm. these same regions in the world. People must realize that our, our, our Father in heaven, He created all these regions, and He put all these things in place from from the from the dirt to the to the sands to the rocks to the birds the bees. You know what I'm saying? He gave us dominion over all things above and beneath the sea. And when the devil understands that he gave us dominion, the devil's goal is to take what God gave us, including our life. Mm. Uh, but mm. nevertheless, um, as we continue through, man, I, I went and did that, that, that two and a half, three years as a youngster. Uh, I went to my mm. father's funeral in shackles and handcuffs, 1982. Mm. Um, mm. In the early 80s, I believe. And, you know, it's crazy because years uh, passed. And I began to sell more and more drugs. I went to that, that, that juvenile facility, and I learned more about the streets and how to become a real true gangster. Got my first Main Street Gangster Crip tattoo on me. And, you know what I mean? Like, how can you go yeah. to a penitentiary or even a juvenile jail and get a tattoo on you? You feel me? Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. It, but but at the, by the end of the day, it was all just the preparations of the enemy to prepare me to be one of his soldiers because... Once oh, I hit Jesus. that stage, yeah, he was schooling that you. stage, man. He was yeah, he was he was schooling me up, man. Um, you know, from a babe, you know, and I and I look at the transparency of us as babes in Christ Jesus that are fed milk because we cannot eat the meat. And then once we become mature in the word, we begin to get fed the meat. Well Great. the devil does the same thing to our young teenagers out here in this world today. You know, he feeds them the little things, the weed, the alcohol, the pills, you know, selling the weed sacks, you know, um, doing the little short runs for the cocaine, big dealers. And the next thing you know, three, four, five years pass by and they become those beasts, those those monsters that are in the streets. And it's due to the the effects of spiritual warfare and the evil uh, uh, of Satan. So, you know, as I reveal my my plight and my journey. Uh, to the next level of going to the penitentiary, you know, three, four times um, before mm-hmm. that happened. Um, I had, I got tired of the streets. You know, I was a dope yeah. boy. I mean, yeah. I was, you know, I was banging, you know, doing all these little things out here, man, throwing cats in trunks, you know, pistol whipping them, and, you know what I mean, shooting the cats down mm-hmm. the street in broad daylight, robbing. I mean, me and my boy, yeah. K-Daddy, we did so much out there, man, uh, and you know, I just thank God today for my life, man. Because I mean, yeah. you know, I should have been I should have been dead a long time ago. I mean, I got shot three times, um, and yeah. these bullets, you know, basically, yeah, I got shot three times, man. Um, these bullets mm-hmm. skips me, uh, uh, skinned me in a few places, 
um, in and out my uh, one of my thighs, uh, my lower calf, I mean, and then I got stabbed um, in prison. I got stabbed <clears throat> um, outside in the, in, the, in the, you know, when I was out there doing my thing, I got stabbed with a beer bottle in my stomach, um, which almost uh, ruptured um, my you, insides. It you, almost bled out. You was in the madness, dog. You was in the madness. Yeah, I was deeply in the madness, man. And, you know, here my mom, my whole thing in my whole life was just my mom, my mom, my mom. You know, my mom was smoking so much cocaine, man. You know, she would rob us. You know, she would take our money, go. You know, if you didn't give her money, she'd put you out. You know what I mean? Me and my sisters, man, we ended up so deep into the dope game. We followed the same traits, man. We followed the yeah. same traits. So I went from selling dope, making two, three thousand dollars $3,000 a day to being one of the biggest crack smokers you could ever imagine. You know, yeah. um, in and out of jail, doing a year yeah. here to the county, there to the county, selling my shoes, my jackets, just yeah. for a hit, selling my, 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 my niece's games, my little Atari. I think it was back in the day, it was like Atari or something like that. Um, yeah, you know, yeah. I, I did everything I could, man, to feed my addiction, man, and that, the devil, man. And I look at that today, and I know a hundred thousands of a percent that it's, the world says it's drug addiction. I call it evil possessions uh, from dark par- dark principalities and dark places, which is yes, it's Satan's. Uh, uh, it's his it's his weapons that he uses for us to kill ourselves. Okay, exactly. Um, and and exactly. an addiction is just like uh, witchcraft. It's just like uh, it is witchcraft. Uh, an anat- it is exactly it is witchcraft on the spiritual realm. And I never used to think the way I think today. And I think when I think about that, I go back to what I've been reading and vibing on, which is Romans 12, uh, second verse. And it, Come on, tells Bible you to, it tells you about renewing of the mind. It tells you, mm-hmm. um, you know, that, that, that when the Lord has called upon you, you know, I mean, you, you have to renew your mind. You cannot be of the ways of the world and think like men and women of the world. You cannot be of the world because you're not of the world once you brings you to be a new body in Christ Jesus. You are a new man made by the Spirit of yeah. God, so you have to think, feel, Come and on. understand, and see as the Spirit of God does. You cannot no longer do the things of the world, um, obviously, because deliverance, you know. So when I think back in my, my time of all that I, you know, experienced from being locked up for 16 years, and, and I and I have to say this clearly because everybody gets this construed every time somebody hears my interview and then they meet me in person. Man, you were locked up for sixteen years. <laughs> I'm like, no, I I did more than that. But the sixteen years were were conversely consecutive by four different prison sentences. So one time I went for like two years, and then the second time I think I went for like about four or five years. And then I want to get some time and get most of that probation. You follow me? And then I went a third time and did another three years. And then I went a fourth time and did five years uh, when I got red-handed. I had had this girl. Her name was Tina. She used to buy drugs from us. We had went to uh, L.A., me and my baby's mama, uh, my first daughter, Tatiana. We went to um, L.A., and um, we stayed down there with her relatives and my cousin Felicia stayed down there so we would be going back and forth we would go buy dope down there and you know what I mean so LA to me was like home you know what I mean throughout most of my, yeah. my, my teenage life and so mm-hmm. when I went to Death Row Records and Uh-oh. interviewed with them and you know they was like yeah we're gonna go ahead and sign you up so they gave me a contract um this was in 91 and um mm-hmm. I'm like, cool. They were like, yeah, we'll make you the voice of the DOC, um, the doc. The doc had gotten a bad car accident, and um, his uh, a tree branch went through his uh, throat. So he lost it. That's how he lost his voice. A, little, a lot of people don't know that, but uh, Tracy uh, is his name. Tracy's a cool cat. But um, I yeah. was supposed to be his voice in the videos, and then they were going to release some music of mine. And, you know, things were just fixing to start going because I told myself I'm going to be one of the biggest gangster rappers in the world. Mm-hmm. Right, this was way before Tupac. Tupac came after I came. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Um, matter of fact, Tupac came like uh, two and a half, three years after me, if I'm not mistaken. I think it was like '94 they signed Tupac. But um, when I left from there that day, I went back to Seattle. About three weeks later, I was in a motel. I had a quarter key of cocaine. Um, mm-hmm. I made a transaction and. Um, that transaction cost me 
about five years, five and a half years of my life. All right, hold your, th- hold, hold, hold your thought right there. Hold your thought right there because five years, that ain't no joke. I'm saying that, man, you have been through some things. But listen, I need to go back because uh, you said that you was, went from one of the biggest drug dealers to one of the big uh, biggest drug smokers. And uh, back in the hood, they used to say a monkey can't sell bananas. Some people going to catch that after a while. Some people going to figure monkey. that out after a while. Yeah, can't sell bananas. Can't, you can't yeah. sell what you're going to eat. <laughs> you can't do it. Listen, listen. Hold, hold what you got there, powerful man of God, with that testimony. Because I want these people to understand that this is real life testimony that my good brother sanctified soldier Thomas Morrison is giving. He's not yes, making sir. this up, and he's not pretending to be somebody that he's not. But when we no. come back after listening to some more of this off the chain, real groovy and hip gospel rap music that I'm about to play, and we're going to play some more, we're going to get what changed in his life. We're going to talk about the transformation because there's Amen. parents out there that have children that are going down the path that you have already gone down and they're completely lost and they're running out of hope. And there's some people that are on that path that's listening to this broadcast right now and they need to hear about the consequences, but they need to hear about the potential transformation that can happen in their lives. So don't go nowhere, Sanctified Soldier. We got you. We appreciate you being right here with us. You are listening to Fire, the Gospel Experience. Because once you leave this broadcast, we want to leave you with something for your soul. Hello, everybody. This is the Sanctified Soldier, Apostle Thomas. And you are listening to Fire, the gospel experience where the fire is a moving, uplifting, and unrestrained experience of biblical, inspirational, and gospel music. I pray that my new single titled, Thank You, will uplift your spirit and give you new strength. Keep it tuned in and bless your family and friends and co-workers by telling them about fire. On this station, it's all about kingdom building. Praise God. Me. 
into our lives and making permanent and drastic changes that was much needed in our lives. We apologize, Heavenly Father, for waiting so long and waiting so late for things to become so hard-pressed and tragic. But that's what it took for us to realize our own stubbornness and rebelliousness to deny you being the creator, being a spiritual father over us. So now, dear God, we just want to say thank you. We appreciate you in every way possible. And we will continue the work that our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ started, that is, to go out and to make disciples, to share this word of truth, and then disciple men, women, boys, and girls in the way of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. We are having a wonderful conversation with my special guest, gospel rapper, sanctified soldier, Thomas Morrison, is in the house. And what I'd like for you to do, my good brother, is is that uh, a former drug dealer, street walker, headbanger, gangster, uh, foot soldier like yourself, finally got to the point where what you was doing just didn't seem to fit who you really were deep down inside. Tell us about what was it that finally helped you come to yourself like the prodigal son and change your ways. Um, Ron, I, you know, I'm going to be honest with you. Um, 1998, um, I was in, um, I was about a year and a half Excuse me, I was about a year and a half away from being released from prison. And at 3.12 a.m. in the morning, they said, 963-999, pop out your cell. I woke up, popped out my cell, walked down the hallway to the CO. It was actually the chaplain standing there, and I can remember his glass shining with the, the, the rim, the silver rim glass. The lights were dim, real dim. And I seen this big shiny cross on his chest. And that cross was so symbolic because it never left my mind. I'm actually those crosses that I work when I perform now. And that's okay. the symbol of the change in my life. Uh, it doesn't, it's not a symbol of God. It's a symbol of change and peace in life. But he said this, he said this to me. He says, I'm sorry to inform you, but your mother just died two hours oh, yeah. ago in Seattle, Washington, in the hospital from mm-hmm. a lung infection. Mm-hmm. And I said, oh, wow, really? He's like, yes, sir. And I returned back to your cell. I said, yes, sir. And I turned around and went back to my cell. That was at 3 o'clock in the morning. Wow. I stayed up for three days, four days, writing songs. I was just Mm. trying to find a way to clear my mind and to understand the information that I that was just given to me. That my mother, the person that I saw the world of, is gone at the age of fifty. Drugs took my mother. Drugs took my sisters at the age of thirty nine, thirty four, fifty one. Um, my little sister is all I have left. Mm. And when it came to that point in my life, I had already given my life to Christ and got baptized in 1995, 
in prison because I was just tired of being tired. I just did not. I got tired of the white man telling me, when you get up out of here, you're going to do the same thing over again. You're just doing this Christianity stuff because you're locked up. Ain't that something? And that that resonated inside of me. I said, mm-hmm. you know what? This You can be locked up like a lot of our young people are. I'm going to touch on that. Without even being in a prison, you can be locked up psychologically and mentally. You can be locked up to believe that all you've got in the life is to do is sell dope and to go hustle and to go gang bang and to get that fast dollar and to kill people. Whatever it took to get money, taking life the whole nine. That's a sense of incarceration because you're psychologically locked up to believe something that's false. You're okay. locked up in mind because Satan has you believing that this is all your worth and your value is. And this is what you got to do to make it. And it's a lie. So when I that penitentiary, I said this prayer right here. God, please help me. Help me to have a new life. Help me to have a job because they said I'm a felon. I'm a quadruple, multiple felon. 19 mm-hmm. felons and 147 misdemeanors. No, I'm I know. You can help me get a job. Why? Because your word tells me all mm. things are possible through you. That's right. When I realized that, I went to work release. I was there in four weeks. You got to put your job. If you don't have one in four weeks, they send you back to population. The third week, there was this job call that came up. It said something like this. 963999, job call for Sound Mazda Hyundai Suzuki. Car dealership as a customer service rep. Here's your bus ticket. I went down there and got the job, and the man says to me, I'm going to teach you how to make $10,000 a month legally, legitimately, to where you can go to the streets again. Wow. <laughs> yeah. That's God. And, That's God. And, and so um, as I went through the course of many times and, um, you know, the different ups and downs of drug addiction, even after I got out, I still struggled with drug addiction. I was clean and sober for five years because I was locked up. Okay? Mm-hmm. But then when I got out in 1999, I was released from work release. Well, in four months, I made $16,000. I never made $16,000 legally like that. And it was all saved up because, you know, in work release, you can't spend no money. They distract the money up in the bank account. And when you get out, they get you your check of all the money that you saved in work release. Okay. And so, um, you know, my life began and, you know, I was okay for the first year or two. And then I, you know, back to the wrong people. And I started mm. dabbling and dabbling and getting high again. I relapsed and, you know, I had a good job. So I wasn't thinking to let nothing take me from not being able to make it to that job because that was the part of my drug addiction. Um, mm-hmm. And I struggled with that again. So I, I went, as they said, I went back. I thought at that point, I said, man, for me, my mom, all my sister, done died from this. You know, I done had a quarter of my life behind bars behind it. God, please help me, Father God. I repent right now before yeah. you, Father God. Yeah. Please send somebody to help me, Father God. I don't want to go down this alley and be homeless and, and in the streets again. Well, he showed me. Yeah, he sent me somebody. I got into a, a 12-step program. I got into an a outpatient treatment facility. And you know what? I just kept you. at it. I kept That's at right. it. And then a, a couple of years later, I was cleaning in for another couple of years. I dropped the ball again. Okay? Mm. This time I dropped the ball. I'm going to show you how God does me. <clears throat> when I dropped the ball, I relapsed. I went and got high. I went and got high. I pawned a car um, to mm. a drug dealer from a dealership Uh-oh. that I worked at. This was in Atlanta, Uh-oh. Georgia. <clears throat> Um, and um, they took the car, and they, they found the car. They fired me because I called, and that was on a Saturday. It was a two-day re- uh, two binge, and I called them, and I said, hey, man, you know, somebody stole the car from me. They knew I was lying. They fired me, and then what they did is they told, uh, they filed a lawsuit, not a lawsuit, they filed charges against me, saying that I was, they gave me the car to use the city up. It was my demo. But what I did, I wouldn't cover it off of that. They told the police, the dealership called the police on me and told me that I stole the vehicle and I wasn't authorized to drive it. So I had a felony mm. warrant looking at 10 years. Keep it moving. Get a defense suit. 
the devil was really, the devil was determined to lock me out of the game, okay? Everything that I went to, I was looking at 10 years for that. So I stayed in Gwinnett County for seven months. That's a real, real hard jail to be in in Gwinnett County, Georgia, out outside of Atlanta. I stayed there for seven mm-hmm. months. I got bailed out by a, a friend of mine from a, a stoke bit company that I used to work for. She came and bailed me out. I went to Florida. I get down to Florida. She used cocaine. I started using again. I got depressed now. I was, I'm was i in suicide. I'm, I'm depressed, but I'm, I don't want to get high no more. But I keep finding myself back amongst these people, this thing. <clears throat> so one morning I got up, I said, I don't want to be with you no more. I had two suitcases. I didn't have very many clothes in that. I said, I'm just going to leave here and go on about my business. That lady, mm-hmm. pulled, and she was a white woman, she pulled a gun on me. She told me Uh-oh. I wasn't going nowhere, begged and pleaded for me not to leave. I said, okay, I won't leave. We'll talk about it when you get home from work. This is at 8 o'clock in the morning. By 11 o'clock, the police, the sheriff was at the, uh, the door. The Seminole County Sheriff come to the door, uh, come, come to the parking lot. I was out in the parking lot that morning. They said, are you Thomas Morrison? I said, yes, sir. He said, are, are, are you dating, uh, is your girlfriend named Laura Batten? I said, yes, sir. He said, well, it appears that uh, you guys got into a, a fight last night. I said, uh, no, we didn't get into a fight last night. We kind of got into an argument this morning because I told her I was going to be leaving and going back <clears throat> to the West Coast. Uh, he said, well, that's not what we heard, but she's on her way. I said, what do you mean? She's mm. at work. Well, the sheriff was bringing her home. This woman went You know, when you use drugs, man, drugs one of the most substances is cocaine that makes you get angry. Yeah. My mother got a lot of things to you. Do you know she walked past me with the police like I was not even standing there, went upstairs and got that same gun she pulled on me and held it up to him and said, this is the gun that he pulled on me and stuck it in my mouth and said he was going to kill me, my mother, and my son. And then when he slammed me up against that wall, put handcuffs on me and took me to jail. Quick, yeah. Murder. Mm-hmm. Attempted murder And I'm like oh mm-hmm. my lord So as it really hit me I'm looking at 30 years For yeah. attempted murder In Seminole County, Florida At the same mm-hmm. time I'm out on bail From Gwinnett County For first degree Auto theft Amen Wow Okay. That's a lot Now That's a lot I'm going to wrap lot. this up right here I went to court after seven months being there this is when I wrote the song, Thank You. Um, mm-hmm. God, I went to him in prayer, and I said, you know, you know everything and all things, and I see what you're trying to do. I swear before God, I will leave this all a little home. I mean, I said, please, Lord, just let get me free. You know, I didn't do this. I'm panicking. Yeah. I was panicking. Yeah. And, um, you know, he, 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 he told the people, I said, uh, if, you, if you do a DNA test, you're not going to find none of this. This is a made-up story. This is not true. The judge said, granted, they did a DNA test on the muzzle of the gun, fingerprints, everything. Three weeks later, came back to court on a Saturday. They said, Mr. Morrison, you are now here granted to be immediately released. These charges are all being dropped against you. These are fraudulent charges. We're now going to press charges against uh, Ms. Laura, whatever that lady's name mm-hmm. was, uh, for yeah. uh, perjury or something like that. So God showed his face. I cried out to him in, in, in Bible studies and in, in, in yeah. church and in, inside the jail and, and to share his word with people. But all my point is, I knew God was going to free me. See there? And he freed me from this. Amen. You know? And so Amen. after that point right there, I said, you know what? I'm done. I'm never going That's back to none of this. So um, I began to continue to go through life and while I was locked up all that time in all of these prisons, I wrote 13 mm-hmm. different albums of gospel rap music. This was back in the 90s. This wow. was in the 90s. Okay, here it is, mm-hmm. 2019, and the same music that I wrote 26 years ago. Okay, yes, sir. Is now playing on over 1,700 radio stations between here, Europe, Uganda, Brazil, the Amen. Philippines. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. The United States, Canada, mm-hmm. like when I tell you God is so powerful and yes, He's so he real, you know, and the devil still tries to get at me today. Yeah, he literally. I mean, my finances. He tried to attack my marriage, different crazy stuff. And, but yes, because sir. I got a strong wife, 
Um, Amen. I got a strong woman, and, and we have a strong household and uh, uh, an amazing marriage. You know, I know we don't get to give a shout out to my my manager, but I'm a first and foremost shout out to my wife. That's right. The CEO of TNT Industry Records. Mm-hmm. My partner, my my friend, she that is the she she would has went without with me without to mention that I had. Um, Amen. you know, everything that I needed. Um, and I just love my wife so, so, so much. No matter what happens in my career, you know, as long as God's purpose is being met and, and what his point for me to be in this life and what he wants me to do with yes, sir. these children, the youth, you know, that is that is my focus. Um I do give a shout out to Miss Felicia because she's an amazing mentor. She's not just my manager, but she mentors me. I talk to her probably four or five times a week. We have Bible studies together. We have prayers together. You know, I mean, she is, man, my team, Amen. my camp that I got is amazing. And it's weird because I had all sisters growing up and the whole camp yes, that sir. takes care of my business. They're all women. Mm. Um, well, listen, sir, so, so listen, listen, Doc, hold on, hold on, Doc. I knew you had a lot to tell in your story. I knew we wasn't going to be able to get it all out in one particular show. We're going to have to come back and let the people hear about this wonderful ministry that you have going on. I was hoping you could get it in now, but you needed to share your testimony so that people can appreciate the things that you've been through and the things that God has brought you through. But listen, before we let you go, I need you to give us all of your booking information because there's pastors out there and concert promoters out there that are still putting together the 2019 schedule. And they're going to want you to come there, man, and give your testimony and sing this gospel music that you've been holding on. I guess you could say you had it in the vault. All those years, they're going to want you to come and be a force for their program, for their event. So let us know all of your booking information, your website, and please let us know how can we download your music. Um, Booking through Axe Entertainment Management. Um, at gmail.com That's A-C-T-S uh, Entertainment M-G-M-T At gmail.com It's Felicia Leslie Knight um, uh, You can also contact us at 803-614-8018 At our TNT Ministry Records Office number um, You can download my music Through iTunes, Google Play Every I don't care if you got an Android If you got a Spotify Or, 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 or Android or an iPhone Whatever phone you got all you got to go to is the music download that you have, the platform that you have. And I'm on 90 different platforms, Decker, um, Google Play, Apple Play. Um, you can also go to the sanctified soldier at gmail.com um, at our website. Um, we also have, of course, all the social media sites, YouTube, Twitter, um, Instagram, Facebook, the sanctified soldier fan page. Um, there's information everywhere. All you guys got to do is hit us up, the Sanctified Soldier, uh, on Facebook. And, um, you know, I just want to say an encouragement word to the young youth. You know, if you're out there in the world, man, and you hear this message, at the end of the day, the devil is seeking to destroy you and all the things that you guys are doing out there, from the drugs to the gang banging to the fast money to the fast life. You know, if, if it's not the right thing, it's the wrong thing. You guys know that it's obvious. The right way is the best way, even though it might take some time, but God has a purpose for you in your life. The devil wants to destroy you at a very young age as quick as he can. So yeah. as long as you're out there in the streets, you're setting yourself up for self-destruction. Um, if I can be of any help to anybody, you know, we don't put dollar signs on salvation. Just give us a call That's and reach right. out to us. Um, we have an upcoming book coming out. My book is called From Prison to Redemption. That book will be out in June. Uh, we have a new album coming out this summer that's called uh, Armageddon is the type of album, Spiritual Warfare. Um, I will be featuring some artists on that as well. So this summer is going to be huge for TNT Ministry Records and the Sacrifice Soldier Camp. Uh, Mr. Ron, I appreciate you. I wish there was a lot more stuff I, I wanted to share, but of course, I guess we don't have that time. Um, but I just want to encourage the youth, mainly the youth, drugs, you know, all the things that are out there in the world, man people that are suffering from addiction, people that are suffering from domestic violence, from homelessness. All you got to do is open up your mouth and say, God, please help me in the name of Jesus and believe that in your heart and start to function with people, places, and things 
resources, positive people, people that are doing what you want to do. You know, get involved with these people. Don't be ashamed and don't be, you know, prideful not to get with these people and get the help that you need because the resources are there. Mm-hmm. For this amen, amen. Well, listen, my good brother, listen, we will have you come back because I already knew you was full and you had a lot to share. I was not <laughs> pressed about it because I said, look, if we have to do a part two and a part three so that you can get it all out, it's all good with me. I'll just get with our dear sister in Christ, Felicia Leslie, and we'll work that thing out. So listen, until next time, man, you keep doing what you're doing. You keep the faith, and you keep breaking that fallow ground wherever you are and planting those seeds of faith and point people to Jesus through the life that you live in. I appreciate you so much. God bless you, man of God. Thank you for joining us on Fire, the Gospel Experience. That is my brother, awesome man of God. I'm telling you, tell you Awesome people of God are coming on this broadcast. I thank each and every one of you so much. And for all of you gospel people out there that have been in touch with me and have let me know that you are looking forward to coming on to this show to be a blessing, I am looking forward to having you. Look, before that music break, I didn't forget about you. Before we had that second part of our interview, that was Latanya Morton, gospel rapper with we ain't promised, and then we heard my special guest Thomas Morrison singing that song. He was talking about that he wrote in prison 26 years ago, entitled "Thank You." So I appreciate you, Latanya Morton, for that awesome song of "We Ain't Promised" at the end of our break. But right now we have more gospel rap music from my good brother, man of God. You heard him yourself, Thomas Morrison, better known. As the sanctified soldier telling you that he didn't figure this out on his own. What he did was he put his faith in the power in the blood. Amen. Hallelujah. That's what I'm talking about. What can wash away my sin? Sin nothing but the blood of Jesus. Cheer, cheer. We struggle in life, we often do wrong and we seldom do right Parents must suffice in front of the kids When they become a baby, they they do what you did The generation comes, goes right down the line Resentment in the heart breeds an unstable mind When we recognize the damage we've done How can you be your father when you never run your son? Brother propped the brakes before it's too late My daughter was 15 on the first date We learned from mistakes Of the Christ, they nailed him to the cross. Uh, he sacrificed. 
sacrificed his life for the sheep that were lost. They hit him, they kicked him, they mugged him, they whipped him. The chief priests and the town leaders that brought charges against him. Now to the cross, Jesus Christ was a host. The earth began to shake when he gave up the coast. Three days later, Jesus was resurrected. The Holy Spirit showed us why the Son is so precious. The Father's investment for all of mankind. He hears for the deaf and he sees for the blind. The children in the world confused and abused by the evil that they see. What's going on? This is Jerry Rushlock Worldwide, a.k.a. the Batman from Charm City, Maryland, and you're listening to Fire, the Gospel Experience with Ron E. Jefferson, right here on Positive Power, Double XI Christian Media. Before you take a life, 
So put away your guns and your pocket knife. Quit trying to act out, bruh, what you see on TV. Because hell and penitentiary ain't no place to be. Trying to take somebody just like, like what? You think that's fun? So let me tell you something, bruh, that stuff is dumb. What's so important to you to take another man's life? I guess it's the hardships that you got in your life. So think twice. It's like, like this world, world I got real soft on crime. I got to fall out on my knees and pray harder every time. It's the criminal thugs, they the one that's causing this heat. Buying up high guns and taking them back to the streets. Criminal thugs getting guns without a background check. Killing up innocent people, leaving families in wrecks. We should do a background check, no matter where we go. When we trying to buy guns or even purchase some ammo. We got to speak up for the dead because they can't speak for themselves. But instead, we keep making guns and put them out on the shelf. So slow up, making guns and limit our magazine. Because there's too much yelling tape and there's too many bloody things. Kids walking in schools with all type of guns. Not working for God, but working for Satan kingdom. So people, I'm going to say this as clear as I can. We ain't got time to sit down. Now's the time to stand. So think twice before you take a life. So put away your guns and your pocket knife. Quit trying to act out, bruh, what you see on TV. Because hell and penitentiary ain't no place to be. Trying to take somebody to life. Like what, you think that's fun? So let me tell you something, bruh, that stuff is dumb. What's so important to you to take another man's life? I guess it's the hardships that you got in your life. So think twice. Praise the Lord. You better think twice before you take a life. Sounds of my special guest that's coming up for Word Up. You know, this is that time of the show that I believe that just like when praises go up, blessings come down. Well, I certainly believe that when words, spiritual words go up, that blessings go around. I believe that there are anointed people of God out there. I'm talking about you, you, and you that have this gift of encouragement and exhortation that would be such a compliment, and you can bring some more heat to this fire gospel experience. So with that in mind, my special guest for Word Up is here, and he hails out of Chattanooga, Tennessee, gospel hip-hop artist coming right out. Of Chattanooga, Tennessee it is my good brother, gospel rapper that you just heard singing Think Twice. He is here to bless us with Word Up. And we're talking about gospel rapper, my good brother, and my friend in Christ, none other than Stephen Marshall, who's here to bless us with Word Up. And I promise you, he's going to give you. Just what God has already purposed and already intended to bless you with. So without any further delay, without any further due time to waste on long, lengthy introduction, here is gospel rapper Stephen Marto to bless us with word. Good morning, everybody. Praise the Lord, good brother. Welcome to Fire the Gospel Experience. Oh, yes. Uh, welcome. Thank you. Amen. Thank you Amen. So Listen, much, uh, thank you so much for having me on the having me on the show. It is certainly our pleasure to have it. Listen, man, we're going to go ahead and cut you loose and let you do your thing and give us those encouraging words that I believe Holy Spirit God has given you to share with us. And then we're going to spend a little time and talk about you and your ministry. Go ahead, my good brother. The microphone and the platform is all yours. Okay. Um, Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Jefferson. Um, what I what I want to talk about, I want to just talk about uh, talk about the song that I that I written. Um, it's called "Think Think Twice Before You Take a Life." Uh, here in here in the city of Chattanooga, Tennessee, and I'm I'm actually seeing it all over the all over the world. You know, now been going on. The Bible say ain't nothing new under the sun. Uh, 
the reason why I wrote the song because here in our city, I see a lot of homicides and um, uh, drive-bys and uh, people shooting at each other and killing one another. It's like a homicide here, like every week. And wow. think think twice. The reason why I wrote think twice to try to uh, in, to encourage people to um, to make the right decisions when it when it comes to carrying a firearm or carrying a uh even a knife or any 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 type of thing that they uh carrying that would do some harm to other people. You know, think twice before you pull the trigger of a handgun because, you know, we, we, we get this out of time that guns guns kill people. Guns do kill people, but people kill people because Right. You can have a gun. You can have a gun laying on the on the uh, table wherever you gonna have you wherever you have your gun laid. That uh, you can ask that gun to get up a thousand times to go and <laughs> do a, uh, a, a shooting or a homicide. But you can ask that gun to do it. But that gun is not gonna move until a it. person come and pick up that gun. Yes, sir. Amen. That is so true. Yeah. Well, listen, tell us a little bit about uh, your ministry and what compels you to go straight to the street, straight to the front line, and try to make your light shine, make your light shine in those places of darkness that you're talking about where there's murder and all type of criminal behavior going on. What is your motivation, my good brother, Stephen Marshall? Well, my, my motivation is keep keep God in front of me. That's my motivation. My, my you know my motivation is to keep God in front of me and let Him be let Him be the head of my my life. And, uh, uh, because if if I'm walking in if I'm if I'm walking in the right direction, I I can go out there and encourage somebody else to to walk in the right direction. But if I'm failing to the left and uh, and and going to the right, see like I'm confused. I I can't I can't lead nobody, you know, and, and encourage them. So I have to I have to continue uh being motivated by the word of God. And um Amen. By, and, and, and and by me and by me going out and ministering to to uh gang members and, and um uh, uh prostitutes and and, and yeah, just yeah. you know, any not just prostitutes but anybody that's uh, going down the the negative realm, uh but I, I just want to be that encouragement to encourage other people to, to to try to walk in the light. Amen. Amen. Well, listen, you keep walking in the light and you keep that holy boldness that you have in you because a lot of church folk is not going to go places that you and I are willing to go to because God has given us a special calling to go where we need to go, and we ain't scared. We ain't intimidated. We are so grateful that God has transformed our life. We have no problem with going back to those very same neighborhoods, just like the demonic man that wanted to follow Jesus after God exercised all those legion of demons up out of him. He wanted to follow Christ. Jesus told him, said, no, no, no. You would do greater works for the kingdom if you go back to those very neighborhoods where you terrorize people and where people were afraid of you. Once they see the change that have come over you, they will believe the testimony that Jesus has delivered you. So, my good brother, you keep doing yes, what yes, you're sir. doing where God has planted you and you watch how God will do wonderful things in your life. I'm looking forward to having you come back and sit down for a full interview so we can talk more about your ministry. Where can we download your music? Well you can um you can uh people can actually follow me on on, on uh on my Facebook or you can also go to um you can go to e e music e music dot com and um check out the latest album I did. It's called uh, Hot Thorn. And the disciple, and the the name of the album is called "Where Your Mind At." Uh oh, <laughs> that's a good one right there, my good brother. Well, listen, we appreciate you so much, man, and uh, we are gonna continue to support <laughs> God bless you. you. Make sure you keep sending me that music, man, so that I can keep putting you on blast right here on Fire the Gospel Experience. Would you do that for me? Oh uh, yes, sir. Uh, uh, yes, sir. I, I will do that for you. And um, be- before I, before you uh, before we go, Mr. Jefferson, I like to I like to read some. Uh, it's say food for thoughts. I like to read 
I like to I like to leave uh, the listeners uh, some some food for the mind. Okay. And it and it reads and and uh, it reads it say life. Life is too short to live angry and upset. Count your blessings. Let go of grudges. Forgive those who hurt you and move on. Don't let regrets take the root in your mind. Cherish your family and friends who are always there for you. Smile, laugh, and choose to live in joy. Live in the present and make the most of every moment. Love with all your heart. Amen, amen. That's what I'm talking about, Doc. God bless you, man. You know, God is going to keep blessing you. We thank you for joining us on Word Up. Looking forward to having you come back on Fire the Gospel Experience. You keep doing what you're doing for Jesus, man. Yes, sir. And thank you for having me. Hey, man. It was my pleasure. That is Stephen Monster. Thank you. The Gospel Experience. Giving us those encouraging words to live by. It's all about action. We can talk a whole bunch of talk, but you know what? It's your action. Speak louder than your words. Amen. Amen. Listen, this is Fire, the gospel experience, giving you the very best in inspiration as well as some of the very best in gospel music. Hello, it's your girl Eternal, and you're listening to Fire, the gospel experience, where the fire is moving, uplifting, and unrestrained experience of biblical inspiration and gospel music. I pray that my music new single, My Cup, will uplift your spirit and give you new strength. Keep it tuned and be blessed, you and your family and friends, co-workers, by telling them to listen and log on. It's all about kingdom building on fire. God in the building, so repent for our sins, cause don't want to burn forever, cause it sound like it hurt. Spread the gospel, spread his love, put in word. We praise him like we going crazy. 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 God's in the building, so let's have church. Everybody's in the building, so let's go to work. I know you don't want to burn, it sounds like it hurts. So we got to get it right for the man and live and learn. Okay, it's time to get crazy. It's time to get crazy. I got to scream holy hype. That's what brings it crazy. I got to raise my hand to the man who amazed me and forgave me and then changed me. the way, the truth and the life. And now that I got it locked in, I got to get it right. Okay, I'm talking about that greater man all the way to the light. And I ain't going to never stop. I'm doing it with my might. And I'm going to keep rapping. Dancing the rep and full of Christ And I feel Jesus with me so I know I'm doing right Nobody's stopping this so you might want to think it twice We don't duck God twins at it again Holy hype, get it right God in the building so Repent for our sins cause Don't want to burn forever cause it sound like a her Spread the gospel, spread his love, put in word We praise him like we going crazy 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 like we we say heat it, bubbles in a backpack, and use the word of God when we under attack. Dance like we're crazy, hands to the sky, and while we thank God, devil, devil, use a lie. Eternal giggy giggy with junkyard twins, all the way to the end, cleanse for our sins. No bones, baby bones, add it again. My homegirl, two qualified true friends. Fly girl, miracle, Superman swag, mix them up, sparkles, quiet form bad. Power, power, too cool, smooth, king cool at JYDC. We going crazy, we going crazy, crazy, we going crazy. God in the building, so repent for our sins, cause don't want to burn forever, cause it sound like a her. Spread the gospel, spread his love, put in word. We praise him like we going crazy. 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 We praise them like we going crazy. Like like no time to sleep, it's self is cheap, it's time to hit the street and outreach. All costs, cause souls is lost. Hit them hard and let them know that our God's the boss. Look, okay, Cole Red worked that. Holy high stars, you know the big, yeah, the twins back. I heart on our shirts, down and ass back. Gotta straight pray to the man that is running that. Look, we out here trying to reach these kids and let them know God said, come as you are. And we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. Remember, Jesus died for our sins. So let's go pray. Yeah, we going crazy. 
crazy, crazy, we going crazy. We going crazy and crazy, crazy and crazy. God in the building, so repent for our sins, cuz. Don't want my breath forever, cuz it sound like a hurt. Spread the gospel, spread his love, put in work. We praise him like we going crazy. We praise him like we going crazy. We praise him like we going crazy. We praise him like we going crazy.
Yes, hallelujah. This is fire, your gospel experience, and we are your sanctified salvation station, lifting up our God and giving you the very best in gospel music. That was gospel artist Marlon McDaniel on fire, the gospel experience, and then out a shout to him as well as a happy birthday. I told you I was going to get that music on for you, Marlon. God bless you. I pray God bless you with many, many more blessed and happy birthdays. And before that, we heard from gospel rapper Eternal doing her thing out there on the West Coast with Praisey. Sometimes you can make your praise go crazy. Listen, we want to encourage you with our inspiration for today, which is the way coming out of John 14, 1 through 6. You know, the Bible says, our Lord Jesus says, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God? Believe also in me. Isn't it just like our loving, caring, and compassionate Lord and Savior Jesus to speak comfort? I'm talking about at the most traumatic time in not only his life, but also in the human history of mankind. Listen, out of all the many tortures act committed against people over uh, the time period since time of our creation, none, no one has ever suffered for the sake of all people ever born. And because of his bearing the sins of the world, I'm talking about to be completely separated from God the Father, which in all of God's existence, Father, Son, Holy Ghost, there has never been such a day as that day of torture and crucifixion. Verse 2 goes on to say, In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself. Where I am, there you may be also. And where I go, you know, and the way you know. Listen, as our Lord Jesus prepares himself for his death, he makes it a point to share with his disciples the upcoming future for them and all believers, that although he is leaving them now, that there is a benefit in him leaving. He is departing to prepare a very special heavenly home to be with him throughout all eternity. So in spite of time when we may feel that God isn't as close as we like or not hearing and or responding to our prayers, listen, Jesus has promised that we know exactly where he is. How do we know? Listen, we know by faith. We trust in his word, the Bible, and our Lord Jesus' words have been recorded so that we will trust him and in his word, just like he did for his disciples. Listen, God is true to his word. I promise you he is. Don't let those words just kind of marinate and bring you some more of this good gospel music. Here's my dear friend, sister in Christ, Terry Carroll, with new music entitled Seven. Hey, y'all. She back. Yeah. CC. Terry Carroll in the building. Let's go.
MCs lay back again with the funky lyrics. Little bit that I too deep, too deep for the theory. Come on, come on, give my friend until you feel the flavor. L U C I F E R B on your best behavior. I cannot believe this game is catching up on people. I'm afraid to back to the devil with some of my people. Got to slide down like a summer double bullet. The devil's flying food, you can't let him pull it. You're shutting much weakness, get your ass together. Don't be just like an elephant, your mind with the word of God like a am a hard to do. You're afraid to be this behind, you got the power to do it because you're a threat to the devil. What? No devil, you come at me seven ways, God, that's going to have seven blessings and seven angels of battle waiting on you, devil. So we're here to stay. Listen, I am just happy to have all of you beautiful people responding so well to this fire gospel experience broadcast. I have a young lady that is in the wings that I talked to, and I'm telling you, man, I had a conversation with her, and I felt like we was having church up in here. So let me bring this young lady in, and I'm talking about someone that is really going to impress you. Can't wait to have her on for a full interview. She is the author of to time to transform and is that all you got to bring she is what is known and i love this as intuitive life strategist and winner at life talking about none other than my special guest for a shout out talking about vanessa Klinger is here in the house to give a shout out and to introduce herself and to let you all know the wonderful things that god has for her and what she has been doing. So without any further ado, it is certainly my pleasure to bring on this young lady that's going to bless us with her special shout out. Vanessa Klinger is here on Fire the Gospel of Spirit. Thank you. Thank you. Amen. Thank bless you, you woman Thank of God. You. Bless you. I appreciate you joining me and coming on in and giving Thanks. us a shout out. Tell us who you are and what you do. You gave us this real long royal title of intuitive life strategist and when they're alive, tell us about yourself real quick and what you do. Well, I am an author and conference speaker. I am I'm considered, like you said, an intuitive life strategist. And what that really is, Pastor Ron, is I rely on the power of the spirit to help me to intuitively uh, reach my clients at a deeper level to, to guide them and help them identify those spiritual blockages that are preventing them from moving forward and being the best that they can be in Christ. Amen. Amen. That is awesome. Listen, I understand too, that you are an author. Tell us a little bit about your books. What, what is the power and the content of those books that you've written? Sure. Uh, The first one is time to transform and it focuses on providing tools and techniques on how the reader can uh, align their soul, which is their mind, the will, and emotions, so that they can be op- begin to operate in perfect harmony to draw into all of those wonderful things that they want to do, be, and have in life. Is that all mm. you got, Bring It is, is more of how to understand and turn your life's blows into benefits and to make them work for you and not against you. And it's, it's merely a series of stories, true stories of my life and the blows that I encountered and how... Mm. Uh, I was given the power to transform that into becoming who I am today. Hey, Amen. Well, listen, I'm looking forward to hearing your life story. We are going to set a schedule so that we can learn more about this intuitive 
life strategy that you have for us that God has revealed to you. So in the meantime, uh, share with us your websites and how my listeners can continue to follow you until we're able to schedule an interview where we can sit down and discuss some real talk. Sure. You can reach me at VanessaKlinger.com. That's my website. Uh, You can also follow me on Facebook uh, at Stay in Love, S-T-A-Y-N-L-O-V-E-2. I'm also on Instagram and Twitter with the same uh, handle, at Stay in Love. Amen. And I understand your books can be purchased at Amazon.com? That is correct. They can type in my name in the search window, and my Amazon page will uh, populate, and they'll be able to purchase my books there as well. Amen. Now, for everybody that might have missed that, I want you to send those promo flyers to me, to my Facebook page. And now I'm going to post them on my FIRE Facebook page so that everybody can continue to follow you and learn more about this intuitive life strategy that you are going to bless them with. Thank you so much, my dear, for joining in. We're going to have to sit down and schedule uh, an interview so that we can learn more about these wonderful, wonderful blessings that you have to share with us. Looking forward to it. And again, thank you for having me, Pastor Ron. Amen. I've just been elevated to pastor. Thank you. You think to my church over there in New Saint Hurricane, we come up, nah, he think he a pastor. Look, that's what she said. I didn't say it. Listen, I'm going to share the goodness of what God has given me, though. And um, I believe that everybody should have that pastor, uh, minister, preacher spirit in them. If they never stand behind a pulpit, They should always be ready to give their testimony about how God has blessed them. Listen, we are still embracing John 14, 1 through 6, where our Lord Jesus is sharing some very, very important information before his earthly departure with his disciples. He is sharing with them. And I do believe, listen, Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you're going. And how can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father. Listen, no one comes to the Father except through me. Now, many people require proof first. Then they claim they'll believe, right? As it was also in our Lord Jesus' day. That ain't changed. Certain ones in the crowd clamoring for evidence to satisfy our carnal mentality. I would rather believe in God and die and then find that there is no heaven than to not believe and die and then find that there is a heaven uh oh, and a hell. But I can't enter in due because of my disbelief. Heaven sitting there, I can see it, but I can't get in because I didn't believe. But very simply, listen, God requires that we believe to see that the declaration that Jesus is the very exclusively and singularly, uniquely Son of God. This is the way, meaning he is the way to salvation, peace with God, and the only possible passage to enter into God's heaven. But also to lead and guide us through all the various plateaus of life, trials, and tribulation. But first, we must believe that Jesus and Jesus alone is the way to God and all his grace, mercy, and blessing that he has waiting to generously give to us as the loving God that he is. Amen. Amen. Listen, I want to thank all of my special guests for joining me. God bless you all. Y'all have really made this such a powerful, powerful show talking about my special guest, none other than sanctified soldier Thomas Morrison, as well as gospel rapper Stephen Marshall. Y'all have really blessed me. I thank you, Vanessa Klinger, for the work that you're doing and for joining me. I'm praying that each and every one of you listeners will be blessed that God will continue to feed your life and give you more power and give you more increase. Pray for me. I'm going to pray for you and love you, so you might as well go on and pray for me and love me back because I'm going to pray for you anyway. Ain't nothing you can do about it other than just keep a brother in your prayers. Listen, I'm going to leave you all with some good gospel music until this next fire gospel experience with David Dougherty. And he's talking about how great God is. Peace and love be yours.
is his name. Mighty and powerful name. His everlasting name. I've come to praise the Lord. Help me praise the Lord. One and only Lord. Jesus Christ my Lord. Big wireless companies sold you an outdated plan tied to long-term contracts and mystery fees. Simple Mobile's different. You get a lightning-fast 4G LTE nationwide network with no contract ever. And keep the phone and number you love. Just text the word BYOP to 611611 to see if your phone is compatible. Simple Mobile. Out with the old, in with the simple. Standard text message and data rates may apply based on your mobile phone service. Please refer always to the privacy policy at simplemobile.com slash privacy policy and the terms and conditions at simplemobile.com slash terms and conditions. 